Needleman and Wunsch is an optimal uh, alignment algorithm. Uh, it's a dynamic programming approach. So that is used while uh, we are doing the global alignment, where we are aligning two sequences over their full lengths. Uh, it was presented by Needleman and Wunsch uh, in 1970. Uh, the basic idea is to build up the best alignment by using optimal alignments of smaller subsequences. Uh, that is the idea of dynamic programming. So actually this algorithm is the first implementation of dynamic programming approach to the biological sequence analysis or uh, sequence comparison problems. Three steps as we have seen earlier, initialization, uh, matrix filling and traceback. Uh, we create an initial matrix so where we have one more column and one more row uh, that is for initialization uh, where M and N are the lengths of R2 sequences. In initialization uh, the cell of first row and first column of the matrix is initially filled with zero. The first cell uh, where we have rows and columns uh, they intersect with one another and then add a gap penalty for each shift to the right. So we uh, are adding while we move one column and we are not changing the row. In that case, we are moving one element further in top strand, which is if we place it on the column, but on the rows, we are substituting the gap. So in this way, we can add those gap penalties. Same way, if our column is uh, fixed and rows are changing. So in that case, uh, we will add the gap penalties. Uh, on over the uh, vertical line uh, from topmost cell to the bottom cells of that column. So here we do initialization. We take the first cell and we put zero in it. So we uh, are actually putting zero in our first cell. Here are our columns and rows and I'm talking about this cell. So we put a zero over here we take in the B, what we do over here is, uh, for example, we have this I which is running this way and we have J which is running this way. So minus J into D. So we put zero initially and then we move on in this direction. So what we do over here is we keep on adding those gap penalties. Anything can be I or J, don't uh, worry guys. So we add a gap. So for example, if our gap is minus two, we move bottom so we are moving j while in i we are standing at same place so here we will add that gap penalty then minus 2 and then when we add that score onto this so it will become minus 4 and so on same way or we can move in left to right in the rows and we can add those gap so that's what is we are doing initialization so we move through these cells row by row calculating the score for each uh, cell. So that is uh, where we do matrix filling. So in this way uh, we can compute three scores, a match score uh, where two segments they match. Uh, here we can also take the mismatch score but in algorithm it's just uh, we put this match score. So it can be if a match for example we put say we add three in it. If it's a mismatch uh, we do it like something like one or something or, or minus something. So in that case, depending upon our scoring scheme, so first part covers both of them. Or we can take a vertical gap score where we move from um, top to bottom and then a horizontal gap score while we introduce a gap. So in this way, we can have uh, three different scores. So you will do that or you will, you will learn it when we implement it actually. So the match score is the sum of diagonal cell score and the score for the match. So diagonal. So from the previous section, we are moving from uh, the the cells in the in the diagonals, the last in the last uh, uh, location. So for example, right now we are at I and J. So it will be I minus one, J minus one. So that cell uh, which is uh, present in the previous row and uh, column in, in the shape of that diagonal. Uh, we can have a horizontal gap score that is the sum of the cells to the left and the gap score and vertical gap score is computed uh, similar way. So here are different situations guys. This is our whole algorithm in which we are filling this matrix. So if we are filling those alignments for i is equal to 1 through m 
maybe this i is running over your rows and j is running over the columns you can flip around doesn't matter so m is your length of uh, one string and n is the length of the other string or the sequence then this scoring function right here fij so that picks up the maximum score among these three possibilities number one you are getting this from the diagonal and here is your actual score which you are putting right over here so if you are introducing a match over here or a mismatch over here you will take that score and add it into diagonal score in case of you are indecisive you don't want to put a match or a mismatch but we want to introduce our gap over here so then you can move from either horizontal if your i is uh, representing your rows or vertical column if your this j is representing your columns so in that case you will have to have this gap penalty and then in the end in the trace back we will have some pointer so that is coming that is keeping track of from where the score of the current cell is coming from so it will keep track of it so diagonal if it is coming from case one left if it is case two and up if it is case three so it will keep track of from where the score is coming so that will help us in trace back so the final step is trace back that is we start at the bottom from right corner and we follow where the maximum uh, score comes from and fmn is the optimal score uh, from ptr this uh, uh, pointer which is actually keeping track of your scores and moving backwards and then uh, it gives you the optimal alignment the scoring scheme um, can be user defined so sometimes we can uh, have our own scoring scheme we can give some score to the match and mismatch and as well as we can fix for the residues uh, we can also drive our um, scores from while using some substitution matrices so that depends so in this section we have seen here is that needleman and moonshell algorithm performs global alignments uh, using a dynamic programming approach